Hi, today I'm going to be looking at the uh, Sophos ES100. I picked it up off eBay. I uh, got this for only like, I think about 20 bucks altogether. Uh, you'll have to uh, excuse the banging in the background. That would be the birds attacking the bird seed in the bird feeder. Um, I don't know too much about this model. Uh, I've read documents online. It just says ultra low power Intel processor, which probably means this is a, an atom based motherboard. Uh, there's no fancy display on the front. There is, however, a nice angled grill on the front for uh, air intake. I didn't see any fans when peering through. Uh, simple controls, two, two NICs, uh, hard drive access, I think, and a temperature warning light. On the back, uh, this particular one doesn't have an expansion card installed. Uh, two network ports, a covered up uh, video port, I can tell by the little icon at the bottom, serial, USB, and standard power. And I've taken three screws out. Let's see about this last one. Where are you? Oh, I can tell no one's been in this. Okay. Oh, pfft. of course there's one on the back. Oh, well that's annoying. It's a security bit. Hang on, I gotta get some more extreme tools. Well, I got it out surprisingly easy. Uh, I don't actually have a security driver set, which is kind of ridiculous, but because this was a very, very small Torx bit, the uh, actual lock security pin was very tiny, so I just whacked it with the screwdriver and it snapped off, and I just opened it up normally. Oh well, good security. Throw that screw away so I don't use it again. And, ooh, hang on. Well, I've only had it open for a couple seconds, and I can already tell you that this thing is definitely worth buying if you can pick one up. Um, for cheap, I should say. Uh, you know, as soon as I see PCI Express cards, or card slots, you know I'm happy. Uh, no, this is actually a super micro motherboard. Uh, one of the Atom-based ones, I'd say. Uh, super micro makes awesome server boards. My, uh, my NAS is actually an, an Atom-based, uh, Xeon. Or, sorry, I'm <laughs> Atom-based. Uh, super micro-based Xeon, uh, board. And, um, yeah, it has a 250 gig Western Digital uh, RE3 um, Enterprise hard drive. So that will pay for the whole thing, I think. Um, yeah, standard ATX power supply, although it does seem to be missing a lot of pins. <laughs> That's kind of unusual. I don't think I've really noticed that before on one. It actually has a lot of wires missing out of it. Uh, we've got two memory sticks, which are... Oh, one one gig uh, DDR2 uh, six sixty seven. So two gigs. That's probably its maximum. And yeah, it has the nice. This is my um my motherboard from my NAS has this too. A nice onboard uh, USB socket, so you can just plug uh, your boot drive right into it. Uh, NAS for free in my case. And yeah, this is looking pretty nice. I'm going to look up some more information on this motherboard. There may not be much to look at, um, but we'll try hooking it up to video and see what the operating system's like. I've never used any of the Sophos um, antivirus uh, gateway things before. Well, I have plugged it in and it seems to be running FreeBSD. Sorry, I was just using that to check for focus, which will never be right anyway on this camera, but hey, what are you going to do? Uh, I didn't, the monitor didn't uh, kick on in time for me to see the uh, the BIOS settings or anything like that. Um, I'll have to reboot. Well, it is, it is booting. Booting something. The system's actually quite quiet. Um, 
I do hear I do hear the CPU fan. It's probably mostly the power supply fan. I can really hear that hard drive churning away due to those big vents, so. Well, it's been a couple minutes and it's still sitting here thrashing away on the hard drive. I don't know what it's doing, but it is going crazy. Still stuck here, still accessing the hard drive. Um, I am going to pull the drive out when I'm done and uh, run an unerased scan on it. Uh, systems like this where they're um, designed to scan internet traffic often cache a lot of the images and documents and stuff that run through them. Uh, so you can get a good idea of what the, the network it was on uh, was used for. Finally! Wow, that took five and a half minutes. That's a long boot time. No one said atom chips were fast, but seriously, that's a little crazy. Uh, okay, so we've got a uh, nice little ASCII login screen. Let's see if the login is something obvious. Oh, uh, they don't have keyboard support turned on. That's annoying. Uh, I can't really be bothered to plug in a serial cable. So let's restart and see what we can find out in the BIOS. Okay, here we go. Oh, I saw 1.6 gigahertz. Uh, enter current BIOS password. That is annoying. Uh, this could take a while. Well, while I wait for the BIOS to reset, um, uh, we'll take a little look at the motherboard. It's a, a Supermicro X7 SLA-H. Uh, uses an Atom 330 chip, which is a dual 1.6 gigahertz 64-bit Atom processor with hyper-threading, so it thinks it's four processors, processor cores, I should say. Um, the motherboard itself uh, is more, pretty standard for a Supermicro board. You know, they, they like to keep their old parallel ATA. They've got multiple serial ATA ports. The aforementioned nice onboard uh, USB. Um, it does actually have a Molex power connector here, which I find a little strange. Not really sure what that's for. It does have some text written there. Um, unfortunately, it's not new enough to have replaced all the electrolytic caps on it, so it's kind of littered with these guys. Ugh. Doesn't seem to be a bad port. I might take off the. the you know what? Screw it. Come on, fan. Let's take a look at this chip. Careful. Oh, damn. That's a big chip. I did not expect an Atom to be that large, unless, unless that's the, the actual platform controller hub. Well, as you can see, I got into the BIOS no problem after resetting the, uh, the battery. And, yeah, it's just confirming all of our... All of our previous findings, which is that it's 1.6 gigahertz, dual core, uh, 2 gigs of RAM. Let's see what else we got here. Maybe there's, um, often there's a, ah, here we go, USB controller, USB configuration, enable the legacy USB port. That usually fixes all problems. And let's see priority blah 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 okay nothing else in here exit setup let's see if we can get some keyboard access well that took positively forever again and yes still no keyboard support uh, I'll probably just have to wipe the drive um, I did however notice that the uh, domain name is set to that of a an immigration lawyer so there you go they apparently didn't wipe their drive. Uh, this usually, this sort of thing usually doesn't have anything sensitive on it, but you know, it's still not good practice. Oh well, I'll see what's on the drive with my Unerase software. Well, here we go. It's running the Unerase scan. It'll take about an hour. Uh, 250 gigs is a fairly large drive, so we'll see what happens when it's done. Let's see what we found. That took about an hour. And yeah, it never the software never finds anything in found files. 
Uh, some zip archives. Yeah, these are all probably just uh, parts of the operating system. Nothing too interesting. Documents, office. Yeah, these are probably wrong. Yeah. It, it, Unerase software looks for patterns in files and sometimes it gets confused. Like, is this really a 104 megabyte file? No, it's probably nothing. PDFs. User manual. User manual. Yeah, this is all just documentation from the uh, the actual appliance. Yeah, nothing interesting there. GIFs. Yes, looks like nothing. Probably installed with the installed with the operating system. Yeah, looks like uh, tutorial stuff, that sort of thing. JPEGs. Same thing. Oh, wait. An invoice. Could be interesting. Two invoices. Keep those. Everything else looks like it's built in. These are all damaged or corrupt. As files get written to the drive, deleted files slowly get erased. So these could be just very old JPEGs. Eh, looks like nothing. PNG files. Yeah, just stock stuff. Again, mostly user manual stuff. It looks like this doesn't uh, cache too much information, if anything. Apple Mail. These are probably not real mailboxes since it's not running Mac OS. And all their junk mail. Yay. It's, I guess it just archives all of its junk mail. This one's called Bank Draft. I bet it's not real. <laughs> I like how none of the previews work either. Uh, oh, good. Can get all the uh, all the Viagra pills. Doesn't appear to be trying to access the internet. So I don't I don't know what it's why it's not previewing any of this stuff. Figured maybe it was trying to do it live or something to load eight, uh, images. Now these all appear to be related to the uh, the actual administration. They all seem to be, uh, you know, they're all saying cron. So that's probably yeah. See, they're 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 running. It. This is probably the cron job that they have set up to run the software update on it. Blah, 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 more junk mail, junk mail. I imagine all of this is junk mail. Even the stuff that, oh, highly confidential. I'm sure that's real. And that's all. Nothing. The software always finds MPEG-2 streams. I don't know why. They're always tiny. It must be some common pattern. Uh, this does not play. Oh, it's 212 bytes. All right. Uh, those are fake. Text. HTML. This is probably the web interface. Yep. Oh. Hello. McFly. Preview. Guess it doesn't like previewing these. That's weird. Software is kind of buggy sometimes. Oh well, I am going to go ahead and assume this is all just related to the web interface. Well, nothing too too interesting on this drive. Oh well, I guess it doesn't. It, 
like I said, I guess it doesn't cache uh, much information locally on this thing. The two invoices were for sweeping rather large bills, $71,000, or sorry, uh, yeah, $71,000, but very interesting. They're from 2010. Well, that was certainly worth the hour of waiting. <laughs>